Joining me now is our chief political correspondent, Laura Tingle. Um, Laura, to go back into the politics of the day, a hard day for the opposition, were they able to salvage a message on what their future tax policy might look like after today? Uh, well, they, they tried, Sarah. I think um, they've got a bit of work to do. I think it's a really unusual for, position for them to be in where they're being wedged rather than the other way around. Mm. So they're essentially trying to do two things. One of them is to sort of say, well, oh, we're letting the tax cuts through, but don't pay any attention to that. Um, look what uh, the fact you can't trust the Prime Minister, negative gearing, all those sorts of things and promising that they will do more on tax at the next election. Um, so they're trying to sort of spread the attention mm. away from the Labor's tax cuts. Do you think cuts. it was strange during question time that they went full bore on negative gearing? That That's that's what I was curious about. Yeah, uh, look, um, that's what their relentless attack has mm. been about. I think that's been because when uh, Labor originally opposed stage three, it also linked that to um, changing negative gearing. Um, so they're just saying, well, they changed their mind on that, so they're going to, you know, that we, we know that they must mm. be lying about this other thing as well. But, I mean, the Prime Minister was reasonably definitive about that in question time. He said, you know, they're talking about something that nobody is ever going to do, which is mm. quite an interesting strong, response. Strong, strong yeah. language. Mm. And if... So is the coalition already raising possibilities about what it may do, particularly about those high-end tax cuts? It's certainly suggesting it will do something about... It will do something more. It will go to the next election promising to do more for uh, all taxpayers, but certainly higher-income um, earners. But they did point out that it's going to cost about $9 billion a year to uh, sort of restore the tax cuts they originally promised. So they are saying, oh, well, we're going to have to cut back, you know, fat cat public servants mm. and government spending, all those sorts of things. But I think the interesting thing about this is if they're talking about more tax, it will create um, a imperative on um, Labor to also be talking about more on tax. And without a doubt, there is too much reliance on the personal income tax base. So there may be a window here that is a good thing, which mm. is uh, more talk about broader tax reform. So sort of by stealth or through a political move, even though, as we saw, both the Treasurer and the Prime Minister is, is very keen to say that this isn't politics, mm. but um, all of those people who've been calling for wider tax reform, especially in the last few weeks, Allegra Spender, the BCA mm. and so on, are we actually going to be able to see enough pressure built up where there is something more substantial put on the table. I think there is a scope for that to happen. And I, I don't think, I mean, say that they did this for political reasons, mm. um, you know, you know, kill horror. Mm. Um, there's always a bit of politics and there's a bit of policy. Um, but uh, I mean, Labor can justify this in terms of um, equity, in terms of cost of living, all of those things. So that makes it OK. But as you say, without a doubt, there is a scope for uh, a bit of policy outcome to emerge from these political imperatives. We will see. But let's go to the Reserve Bank because we had the first press conference today from the new Reserve Bank governor. So I'll start with how she did because this is an, a new initiative for the Reserve Bank. We haven't seen this before. What did you make of it? I thought she was terrific, <laughs> if I can editorialise like that. No, I thought she was uh, really good. Michelle Bullock came across as very down to earth. Yes, I understand the pressure um, of people um, with big mortgages mm. or even small mortgages, but it's not just them who are suffering from inflation and made the case for why inflation has to be dealt with. Um, I think the other thing that was interesting to me about uh, what she was saying was the markets sort of tend to sort of think that they are all-knowing and uh, all-powerful. They're still predicting interest rate cuts uh, by the end of this year or even in the middle of this year. Um, now, the statement from the bank after the uh, board was talking about the possibility of rates going higher, but... Mm -hmm. Um, Michelle Bullock was really saying, look, I'm, we're not going to move until we're sure inflation is going down into the middle of our 2 to 3% range. That's like 12 months away. Yes. Um, so she's not promising mm. any rate relief for a really long time, but I think was very persuasive for somebody who's not had to do this before mm. at all um, and then had to escalate up to this whole new um, process of press conferences. I thought it was a really interesting and worthwhile exercise. And I know this isn't the whole of the New York Reserve Bank, but they did have the longer meeting. Did mm. she say anything about whether that makes a difference to the quality of debate or the outcome? She did. She said that it, she thought it was much better, that um, they'd had time to really consider things properly, you know, in much greater detail. 
you know, look at the much bigger picture. Um, so she said that was good. But as you say, there are other changes to come uh, with the uh, uh, appointment of the new Monetary Policy Board and the prospect of individual board members going out and having their uh, tuppence worth in the public domain. So that starts probably from July, depending on the passage of legislation. So more debate and possibly more talk about tax. Who knew? Who knew? Who knew? Policy. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed, Laura.